Hi guys, happy Wednesday. Welcome to The Morning After. I am your host, Charlene Joint, and today we are recapping episode five of season 15 of Hannah's season of The Bachelorette. And as you guys know, we start off every The Morning After with a Starbucks at home buzziest moment. And this is a moment in the episode that I found funny, or uh, memorable or that I just want to talk about. And that's how most of my buzziest moments are turning out to be. I just want to talk about this. And my buzziest moment is Hannah saying in a voiceover, I really like Luke P and I hate admitting it because I want to not like him. I want to be able to send him home just like I've sent home every other guy that's pissed me off. This is a really big deal because it instantly shows that Hannah's on the same page as all of us. It's not that, you know, we. it's easy to assume that when a, a lead keeps someone who no one likes that either producers told them to which we've already been shown by Hannah that she's not afraid to send home someone producers want her to keep which she did with Cam in episode three and it also shows us that she's no she's not a dummy she's not being kept in the dark which is usually the other assumption and it shows instantly that there's more to Luke P and their relationship that than we can understand because we're not one of the two parties involved there's more to him and everything here than meets the eye and for me just sort of encapsulates what Luke P's presence on this show uh, represents which is that it's about his opportunity for some self-reflection and to change um, and it goes, just goes beyond his appearance on this show. So yeah this her saying this really stood out to me clearly and yeah showed that Hannah she knows full well what everyone, the guys and us included, want her to do, but that there's more to it. And yeah, that was my buzziest moment of the episode. All right, as you guys know, we go through in chronological order every week. And so we start off with last week's cocktail party slash rose ceremony. And of course, the cocktail party is cut short. We go to rose ceremony because it automatically further irritates all the men with Luke P. It's That was not surprising at all. Um, I am a little disappointed, I've got to say, that Luke S. sent himself home here. I think he meant to do this in a classy, respectful way, like, oh, don't worry about me, Hannah. That's kind of how I read, like, feel like he meant to do it, knowing how Luke S. has behaved. But it re read as someone who was nipping in the bud what he thought was going to happen anyway. So it's like, oh, I know I'm going to be sent home, so I'm just going to beat her to the punch kind of thing. Again, I don't think Luke S. meant it for it to come off that way, but that's sort of how it came off. And I kind of wish he hadn't done that. That said, it's clear that Hannah's not that into Luke S. It was pretty obvious, and he's clearly perceptive enough to have read that. I still just really wish he just stuck it out and gone through the rose ceremony instead of just it kind of read like he was like, oh, you don't want me, I don't want you either, kind of. Anyway, um, let's see. And of course, Hannah keeps Luke P. This is, you know, it's meant to seem like this big cliffhanger. But, and, and actually, like I said earlier, Hannah's not afraid to, to show that she, she'll send someone home even if producers want her to keep someone, as she did with Cam. So I, it, this is foreshadowing that Hannah is genuinely torn over Luke P and wants to further explore that relationship, which of course we eventually do. <laughs> okay, so we head on into Mike's one-on-one -on -one date and this is in Scotland. I gotta say, I love that Mike gives big authentic reactions. You know, she picks him for this one-on-one -on -one date and he's just like, <laughs> he just can't contain his excitement. He's grinning ear to ear. And I just love it when anyone, man or woman, is not afraid to just show their emotions like that. And especially since some, a lot of guys tend to be a little more like keeping them card, their cards themselves. Like we'll see Kevin throughout the episode, throughout the season. And I like Kevin, I don't mean to knock Kevin. It's just, he's a little more like, yeah, I'll accept that rose. Like, Ugh. It's like, come on, like be excited. Like we know you're excited on the inside. And I like that Mike's not afraid to just go there. Uh, we got great personality from both Mike and Hannah on this date. Hannah really, especially showed further showed us how fun and goofy she is, especially when she had a few uh, drinks in her. She was really quite funny. Um, I also like how she said to Mike uh, at, they were at like a pub. She said, I had a great time and I felt comfortable enough to have a great time. First of all, I really, Hannah's really shooting to the top of my bachelorette, my favorite bachelorette's list. The fact that she would take the time to specify 
not only that she had a great time, but it was because he made her comfortable enough to have a great time. That kind of specificity, first of all, kudos to both of them because, you know, for him for making her comfortable, but also to her for recognizing that and articulating that. Yeah, big. I'm a big Hannah fan, clearly. Um, later in the evening, Mike says, this really stood out to me. He said, I'm 31 years old. I've learned a lot in my life. I've been around the world. I truly know who I am and I know what I want. I'm really ready. I can see myself getting down on one knee in a few weeks if I'm ever so lucky. First of all, it's very impressive that he manages to list off those things without sounding remotely arrogant. There's a confidence to Mike that I really do feel like comes with age a lot of the time. Not always, there are exceptions, but he just has a maturity to him where he's just sort of like, yeah, I know who I am. And he can list off his accomplishments and just sort of where he is in life without sounding like all puffed up and like he's trying to prove himself. Um, also, he just said, like, he said, I can see myself getting down on one knee in a few weeks. This is a very, very stereotypey thing to say. He's saying this on their first date and somehow he manages to not sound stereotypey. It's really impressive. A lot of guys would be like, I can really see myself marrying you or falling in love with you or I'm starting to think about beginning to fall in love with you. You know, he just says he can see himself getting down on one knee in a matter of few weeks if he's ever so lucky. It's so I believe him and he manages to say something so cliche in a non cliche way. I really like Mike. I was very impressed by this. Okay, group date. Heavy Emily Maynard vibes on this Highland Games date, can I just say. Anyone who's been watching the show as long as I have will know that the Highland Games group date has been done before, except it was done in Croatia on Emily Maynard's season. Um, this is where it was meant to be done. That said, I will never tire of a Highland Games date. I love these group dates. And what, this group date also proved to everyone that you don't need drama to have an entertaining group date. It was really just a bunch of guys who were like good friends and who were all pursuing the same woman, innocently competing with one another. Even Kevin walking in on Jed making out with Hannah was like dealt with lightheartedly. He's like, ha ha ha, I saw you look like you were having a good time. You know, just, I wrote in my notes, more of this please, because I'm not above finding drama entertaining, but I hate it when it start to t starts to take up, you know, a bigger chunk a bigger percentage of time than it should. And this group date shows that we really don't need it. We can just watch these people get along and it's it can be plenty entertaining. All right, Luke P's 101. There's so much to talk about here that I'm almost overwhelmed, but I'm gonna contain myself. I felt for Luke P here. <sighs> Here's a Luke P is so maddening, but then you still like your heart kind of breaks for him. If you, you like, I never thought that I could feel bad for Luke P, but then he just, he just has these moments. Here he's trying to make conversation with the guys before leaving for his date, and they all clearly despise him, and he's just like, hey, like I heard you guys were wrestling in kilts, and you know, and they're all just sort of like, and I just felt bad for him because he wants to fit in. Like you can see that he is trying, and he just doesn't understand how he rubs others wrong as badly as he does. Ugh. I just, I feel for him. He still drives me crazy, but I did feel for him here. Oh, okay, so on the date, I mean, there's so much to talk about here. My, I normally have like, if normally my notes are like this, it was like three times what it normally is. I have a lot of notes. Um, Luke P addressing Hannah's concerns. I wrote, this guy is good. He admits that he could have handled the Luke S situation better. He even says he screwed up and said he had no business saying whether or not he felt Lucas, you know, sh no business having an opinion on Lucas considering he didn't know him very well. Yet, he defended his actions by saying, I just had a feeling about him and I had to tell you. This is pretty advanced level manipulation because by admitting some fault, he's legitimizing the other things that he's saying. And it does seem like he has this down to a science, whether or not he even realizes he's doing it. It was really like, I, I'm convinced that Luke P believes everything he's saying. And Hannah, for her part, I mean, clapping emojis for Hannah, she doesn't miss a beat. She said uh, later on, this is again a voiceover, he doesn't really say exactly what he's doing wrong, he just gives excuses for it. So true. She is so astute. I mean, anyone who was doubting Hannah as lead, when I'm not going to pretend that I, you know, wasn't you know, we all remember the toast that she couldn't give, but man, is she coming into her own here. She does not miss a beat. She is extremely on top of everything and what she needs from a guy. And that was really shown here. In general, this date felt very uncut. It felt unedited. I 
while this kind of thing can bore me to tears, I was glued to the screen. This conversation had me wrapped. I talk about this in my third recap, so I don't want to repeat myself here, but suffice to say, the recap is about Luke P. <laughs> um, Hannah going to, okay, this is my last thing. Hannah going to strangle him. There's a moment where Luke P like smiles at the joking of him and then you see his smile fall and uh, my heart broke. I almost cried. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that, but I, I almost shed a tear watching that because you see him wanting to understand her and it's like there's too many, there's too much in the way. I don't even think he realizes that he's fooling himself. It was, ugh, it was a good episode. Good episode. That's it. <laughs> That's it for the morning after. I really enjoyed this episode quite a bit. Uh, let me know what you guys think as always. I love your feedback, your input, and be sure to read my flare recap, which should be out now, and my pretty pandas recap, which will come out later this week. And yeah, thank you for tuning in to the morning after. I'll see you guys here next week.